Good morning, everyone. It is 10.30 on Wednesday, which means we gather for a church service. I am recording this so that I can send it to YouTube later, and then I can email it out to, to others who are unable to join us at this time live. So good morning. It's Wednesday, Easter Wednesday. And we gather in strange ways, in strange times, to worship and to still be together. So I will share the PowerPoint of today's worship, and then we'll hold some silence and begin. So there we go. There's today's PowerPoint. If you've got the hard copy of our prayer book, it's on page 74. So today, 15th of April, Wednesday in the Easter week. Rejoice always, pray constantly, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Open our lips, O Lord, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hallelujah. The song of praise is the song of Tobit. Blessed be God who lives forever. Blessed be God who rules over all. We give thanks to you, O Lord, before the nations, for you have scattered us among them. There we make your greatness known and exalt you in the presence of all the living, because you are the Lord our God. You are our Father forever. When we turn to you with all our heart and soul, to do what is true before you, then you will turn to us and hide your face from us no longer. Consider now the deeds that God has done for you and give thanks to God with full voice. Praise the Lord of righteousness and exalt the ruler of the ages. Amen. The psalm for this morning is 105, 1 to 9. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded. For a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading um, for today is actually from the book of Acts. So it's Acts 3, 1 to 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. 
and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intensely at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Reading from Luke 24, 1 to 35. Sorry, 24, 13 to 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going from to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him, and he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be contemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some woman of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is nearly over. So they went in to stay with him. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, 
and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been no, made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Short reflection on that fantastic reading about the road to Emmaus. Uh, about a year ago, I went down to Wellington to the Anglo-Catholic conference for three days. And the Bishop Stephen Cottrell came out and this was the passage for the entire three days, really. And it was glorious how the Bishop unpacked it. So there's just a couple of things I want to kind of look at in this passage. It's become one of my favorites since, um, since that experience a year ago. And a couple of things we can notice is two people initially in some ways are going the wrong way. They are walking away from Jerusalem. All this amazing stuff has happened. It's the Easter Sunday afternoon, perhaps. And they're walking away from Jerusalem, going effectively the wrong way. And they go back to Jerusalem later. The word journey is often kind of overused, but the reality is, is most of our faith, most of our discipleship and our growth happens in a moment and over a long time. So the road to Damascus, where Paul has this, massive epiphany and realizes all at once. Often it's more a road to Emmaus. So journey starts out maybe going the wrong way. Jesus just walks with them. So initially Jesus just joins them on their walk and they keep going the wrong way. They did not recognize him initially. And they just kept walking and talking. He asked them, what are you discussing? Not let me tell you all the cool things about me, but what are you discussing? What's going on in your life? Tell me about where you are at at the moment. He didn't force his answer onto them. He listened, and it's kind of funny, the bit where they said, um, are you the only person who does not know what has just happened? Yeah, Jesus knew. He knew a lot, but he listened to them, and they invited him to tell them more about this person, Jesus. And interestingly, towards the end, Jesus' company must have been quite pleasant because they didn't want him to carry on. They didn't want him to walk away. They invited him to spend more time with them. Jesus didn't force that. He was invited. And then, of course, he took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He shared it with them and their eyes were opened. And they saw and knew they were forever changed. They turned around and went back to Jerusalem. They turned around. They went the other way. They repented, in other words. That is all repentance is. A turning around. A going a different way. So in journeying, in listening... In starting where people are at and hearing about their stuff, being pleasant enough that your company is wanted for longer, 
somehow, to me, this entire message is about our mission, our ministry, how we do the work of Jesus in this day and age. We do find ourselves in extremely different times. What are people discussing now? Where are they at? And how can we become a part of that? How can we be pleasant enough that we're invited to stick around for a bit longer? And then how can we share the kind of hospitality, the meal, the blessing, and help people see anew and turn around and go a new way? I think we will be pondering this for some time and taking action as appropriate. As we continue in our service then, wondering about that, there is another song of praise. This one is called A Living Hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose great mercy we have been born anew, born to a living hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, born to an inheritance which will never perish or wither away, one that is that kept in heaven for us. By God's power, we are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the end of time. We rejoice in this, though now we suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of our faith, more precious than gold that is tested by fire, may result in praise and glory and honour at the real revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Collect for Today. Most merciful God, by the passion of your Son, Jesus Christ, you delivered us from the power of darkness. Grant that through faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may be found acceptable in your sight. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us just take a moment to pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. At this time, of course, we pray for the whole world. 
the whole world that currently is suffering together, coming together in new and profound ways, supporting each other, and realizing how interconnected we all are. In the midst of our prayers for the whole world, we pray for the church, the church united in time and place, the church that has gone before us, the church of all flavors and denominations and ways now, and the church that will come and is being birthed at the moment. We give thanks for all the things that church people and the church community has done over the years and will continue to do going forward. We pray for our own part in the world. We pray for New Zealand, for our leaders and our essential workers. For the families that find themselves now in lockdown and living a very new and different life. As over the coming days and weeks we consider what might life look like on the other side of level four, may we really give some thought to what sort of community what sort of life what sort of families what sort of future do we want to build in this time a whole new way of being can be and is being birthed we pray especially those for that that find this extremely difficult. For those who perhaps being at home is not safe. May we forever have a heart for the lost, the least, the people who need more, who need more care and who need more of our love. May we never forget may we be forever taking action appropriately and of course we pray for ourselves we pray for our families we pray for our loved ones And I, as the priest in charge of the Albany and Greenhithe area of Auckland, the area I lovingly call the left-hand side of the North Shore, I pray especially for everybody who finds themselves in that area, from Greenhithe up through Unsworth Heights, up into Albany, up Dairy Flat Highway, down to Paremaremu and Riverhead and Coatesville. I pray for you all regularly. Amen. The morning collect is to collect up all our prayers. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, in every stress and danger, that we may trust in your defence and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen.
blessing. As we go out into the world again today, not very far from our homes as we take exercise, and in and around our own homes. But as we go into the world, perhaps through Zoom or Facebook, Twitter or the trusty telephone, maybe finding the new habits of letter writing, may we know the love of God wherever we are. The blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that we may with one voice glorify our God and Father. Amen. Stay home, save lives, stay in your bubble. I'm gonna turn off the PowerPoint sharing and then stop the video. Hang around a bit for morning tea, see what everybody else is partaking in this morning. Until next time, which for this will be 10.30 on Sunday, again via Zoom. Have a wonderful Wednesday. See you all again soon. Bye.